One day, 40 years ago, every single person in Paradigm City mysteriously lost all memory of anything that had occurred before that day. Most people in the so-called City of Amnesia were content with living day to day, just trying to survive, even without knowledge of their history. But one man won't, correction, can't, settle for such complacency. One man in Paradigm City believes in his purpose in life to disseminate the truth no matter the cost to himself or anyone else. Schwarzwald. Voiced incredibly by Michael McConaughey, Schwarzwald is a former reporter for the Paradigm Press turned unhinged and enigmatic renegade. His role in the Big O, as we know it, is often that of a rival to the protagonist, Roger Smith, one of differing and clashing ideals and beliefs. In many ways, Schwarzwald is Roger's equal and opposite force. According to an interview with three of the creative heads of The Big O, director Kazuyoshi Katayama, character and mecha designer Keiichi Sato, and manga artist Hitoshi Ariga, Schwarzwald's character started out something more akin to the Joker from Batman, a sadistic monster who enjoyed seeing people's reactions to his crimes, but as time went on, he became more complex and terrifying in a completely different way the all-consuming fear of the unknown. The name Schwarzwald translates to Black Forest, taken from the name of a German forest that was so dense with trees that no sunlight could penetrate it, stoking tales of what mysterious and dangerous things could be lurking in that foreboding darkness. And much of the fear that Schwarzwald instills comes from these same anxieties, the unknown, the uncertain, the unspoken, and the unseen. A bit ironic from someone whose entire motivation in life is to reveal the unknown. His body is wrapped in mummy-like bandages, with only a slight bit of his real face peeking out from underneath, revealing just enough to make you start to wonder what he really looks like under all that. That creepy outward appearance setting off his inner darkness. And while we have no real idea of what he looks like beneath that ghoulish exterior, I believe there's one truth about Schwarzwald that we can know. And that's what actually happened to him to result in injuries so severe that he felt the need to bandage his entire anatomy. So, bust out your old school typewriters and threateningly flick open your Zippo lighters as I give you my theory as to what actually caused Schwarzwald's disfigurement. Oh, and just in case you haven't watched The Big O yet... Big time heckin' spoilers ahead! Fear comes from not knowing. He then averts his eyes from that fear and acts as if he never had any memories of his life, of his history, from the very beginning. Before we delve into the question of what happened to Schwarzwald, I think it's important to establish who he is. Or, you know, at least what he allows us to know about him. Born under the name Michael Zabok, he was a reporter for the Paradigm Press who became driven to the point of obsession to uncover the great mysteries of Paradigm City and bring the truth to the people. However, his superiors constantly censored his work, and what's worse is that it became apparent to Zabok that the amnesic people of Paradigm City didn't even seem to care about the truth, not even wanting to acknowledge the unseen, to even try to discover the unknown. Sabok's obsession with the truth ran so deep that he led a double life, having a family on one hand, but renting an old apartment in a rundown building on the outskirts of town on the other. Sabok must have realized that writing his articles and having them published through the filter of paradigm would never get him or the people of the city closer to the truth. Thus, he took on the mantle of Schwarzwald, fully embracing his obsession with uncovering the truth. He went missing for about three months prior to the on-screen events of the Big O, prompting a missing persons report, but there was no sign of Michael Zabok anywhere, completely replaced, consumed even by the entity known as Schwarzwald. Schwarzwald made his first proper appearance in Act 4, Underground Terror, when Roger is hired by the Paradigm Press to deliver the pay for Michael Zabok's severance package in exchange for some manuscripts he'd been writing, presumably something with some world-shaking truths about the city of amnesia. However, when Roger arrives to Zabok's apartment, he finds no one there, and the place is soon set ablaze, forcing him to escape through the window. Schwarzwald then introduces himself, insisting that Michael Zabok had vanished from this world. 
before leaving the scene himself. And this is far from the last time that Schwarzwald shows a penchant for trying to set people on fire. Hell, he does it again to Roger in the exact same episode, and when he reappears in Act 12, he organizes a masquerade party as a trap to kill several wealthy socialites by causing their masks to suddenly combust. Honestly, when I was younger, I kind of assumed that Schwarzwald's constant use of fire was one of those, I'm gonna make you feel my pain kind of things, with the implication being that fire was somehow involved in his disfigurement, but then again, that kind of went hand in hand with my assumption that the Paradigm Corporation was so dead set on silencing Michael Zabok that someone hired an assassin to make an attempt on his life, which is actually something I stated in a previous Big O video, but there's nothing in the actual material that implies that sort of thing happened, nor does any website that puts forth that idea actually cite an official source, so... Uh... Whoops. My B. Yeah, so I think we could chalk up Schwarzwald's numerous attempts to set people on fire to a rather grandiose and dramatic method of murder, one that lines up pretty well thematically with Schwarzwald's desire to, metaphorically and literally, burn the corrupt city of amnesia to the ground. Either that, or he's just a big Seth Rollins mark. <laughs> So, if the Paradigm Corporation isn't responsible for what happened to Schwarzwald, and if he wasn't nearly burned alive by some kind of burst of flames, then... Just what the hell did happen to him? Incidentally, the very search for the truth that drives Schwarzwald's every motivation led him to the discovery that would nearly cost him his life. Later in Act 4, once Roger and R. Dorothy make their way underground, they stumble upon an old Megadeus archetype, and standing on its shoulder is Schwarzwald. He claims that a Megadeus like this one was a common thing 40 years ago. He then says that he tried to release the lock on the archetype, claiming that his current condition is what he got for it. That right there is certainly enough to know that his discovery of the archetype was somehow directly linked to his disfigurement, but the real question is how. The argument could be made that Schwarzwald tried to tinker with Omega Deuce's inner workings and mess up some internal bits, maybe cross some wires or damage some other vital parts that caused some sort of explosion that causes injuries. After all, there are very few people in Paradigm City who have any sort of real knowledge of building, maintaining, and repairing Omega Deuce. And considering that one of them is dead, and the others wouldn't exactly be the kind of people that Schwarzwald would associate with, it wouldn't leave him with a lot of options. But could it really be as simple as an inexperienced man messing with technology he doesn't understand and making something go boom? I don't think so. I mean, if there's anything we know for sure about the Big O as a whole, and especially with a character like Schwarzwald and the nature of something like Megadeus is, it's that nothing's ever really that simple. Or do they choose their own master? Do we control them? Or do they control us, Roger Smith? The exact nature of Megaduces and their role in the events of 40 years ago are both things shrouded in mystery, but these giant walking weapons aren't just big lifeless hunks of metal and ammunition. We've seen several times throughout the show that Megaduces have some manner of sentience and, to a certain extent, could act of their own will when necessary. Prime examples of this include Big O rushing to Roger's aid without being called in Act 13 to save him from being shot by the killer android Red Destiny, as well as Big Duo, a Megadeus uncovered by Schwarzwald at some point before the events of Act 12, briefly reactivating and marching towards Paradigm HQ, despite the fact that Big O had torn it limb from limb and sudden impacted its head clean off not 30 seconds earlier. But perhaps the most important aspect of a Megadeus' sentience is the fact that a Megadeus seems to be able to choose who pilots it. The big line of Megadeus' in particular have a screen that displays the message, cast in the name of God, ye not guilty, if the person attempting to control the Megadeus is worthy to be its pilot, or Dominus. However, should the person in the cockpit not be a worthy pilot, 
they could face some grave consequences. The biggest example of this is in Act 24, when the newly repaired Big Duo Inferno rejects Alan Gabriel as a pilot, displaying the message Ye Guilty on the monitor, before smothering him with the very wires he used to connect himself to Big Duo systems, ultimately killing him. So given that, would it really be too out of the realm of imagination to suggest that Schwarzwald's attempt to activate and control the archetype resulted in his disfigurement, not because of some accident related to faulty tinkering, but rather because the archetype simply rejected Schwarzwald as a dominus. And as far as how the archetype would have lashed out against Schwarzwald, we've already seen the attack it would have used. At one point during Big O's fight with the archetype, it dodges a punch and jumps onto Big O, unleashing an electrical attack from its head. And of course, a severe electrical shock could cause some serious physical side effects, one of the most prominent being burns and physical scarring the kind of scarring that may cause someone like Schwarzwald to cover their body in bandages. I believe that in his devoted, single-minded, obsessive search for the truth, and a means to spread that truth to the world, Schwarzwald stumbled upon the archetype deep in the tunnels beneath Paradigm and attempted to reactivate it, not realizing that a Megadeus chooses its Dominus, and the archetype rejected Schwarzwald as a master, lashing out with its electrical attack and severely shocking his body, leaving the former reporter scarred, deformed, and likely driven over the edge. And yet, his resolve had never been stronger. Nothing would stop Schwarzfall from uncovering what he believed to be the one undeniable truth, not even his own apparent physical death. And yet, he was ultimately silenced by crashing into a giant spotlight in the sky because, hey, he was two seconds away from revealing the true nature of memories in Paradigm City, and this is a Chiaki J. Kunaka anime. We can't have the viewer understand too much. So, what do you think? Do you agree with my theory about what happened to Schwarzwald, or do you have your own ideas? Let me know in the comments below. Also, I have to give a massive shout out to Andy, who runs a website called The Big O Archive. A couple of exchanges we've had on Twitter recently about The Big O, and Schwarzwald in particular, are actually what inspired me to make this video to begin with, and he definitely works hard to make sure that there's a ton of useful information and interesting stuff about The Big O on The Big O Archive, so please go follow him on Twitter and check out the website sometime. Anyway, give this video a like if you liked it, subscribe for more in the future, share this video on social media, and ring that bell to make sure you never miss an upload. Thanks for watching everybody, see you in the next video friendos.